Are we standing by and watching the flames of others being recorded? We are actually featuring and being recorded in our own flame at the same time. Like any typical flame, our flame also has a storyline, a beginning, a middle, and an end. But unfortunately, many of us have forgotten the scene of our story. And thus, forgotten how we were expected to act. We were given a script. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created us, we were given a script. And many of us, as I said, have forgotten the role that we're supposed to play in our own flame or in this life. So, what happened to us? Most of us are only aware of one scene of our story. And that is the middle scene. The scene of lust and attraction to this dunya. It is because of this that we continue to perform poorly enacting the wrong villacious character. We become the village idiot. We become cowards. And perhaps even we become a mere extra floating around in our own flame. We are just here, some of us, going through a motion, not thinking about the direction we have to go and what we're supposed to be doing. When in fact, we were created to be the heroes of our own flames. <coughs> we are modeling up the scene, playing the end of the scene of heavenly relaxation in the middle scene, which was actually designed to be the central scene of battle and wars. Unless we rapidly realize, as human beings, the key component of our storylines and the different scenes within, we along with our flames will become a disastrous box office. If we cannot correct and remember what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed us to do in this life, it simply means when our production has come to the table, it means that we'll have no sale and our flame will be failed. And none of us want to be in this situation. We are here for a purpose through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we don't act properly, then we lose value for our time that we spend acting. The very first scene of our storyline begins, as I said, with the unknown. It begins with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This scene is absent from our backdrop. If this scene belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we came from nothing. We came from nothing. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us, the spirit, we made a pledge to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We made a pledge. We were non-existent at one time. Non-existent. Then we became spirit. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed us to enter this world, into this immediate world. We live this life. This is how we're flim we're talking about. We live this life, then we have a day of judgment. On the day of judgment, the first scene for us to see is the hell. Hellfire. And then it determines what we do in this life. 
in our production frame before we can cross over to the other part of the scene, which is paradise. So my brothers and sisters, we have to work vigorously, vigorously to enter this scene of paradise. We have to make certain that as we go along the way, as we go along the way, we make certain that our journey take us back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what we're here today to discuss about. Our journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, we were created. We were created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, a person heart inside of this body is the most valuable and prized jewel among all of the goods one possessed. I repeat this once again, brothers and sisters. Our heart, which is in our body, is the most prized jewel among all the good that we possessed. We must actually activate safeguarding with our heart from the devilish or from the evil around us and within us. Who seeks to steal and to destroy us, preventing us from going further or doing the right things. In the first stage, where are we going to purify ourselves? We must be taught how to erect doors to prevent the wrong things. Or as we do in our houses, we build houses, we put doors, we put grills, because we do not want the thief or the bandit to enter it. So this is what we have to do as humans. We have to start putting up barriers to stop the devil from getting into our hearts and activating any wrong that there is. My brothers and sisters, the doors to the heart represent the blocking of sin, entering through seven vital organs we have on the body which represent the kingdom, which represent what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. These seven sensitive organs, they are our tongues, our eyes, our hands, our ears, our feet, our private parts, and our stomach. When one commits a sin to one or more of these sensual organs, a black dot, a black dot appears on the heart. As soon as you commit a sin, it tells on the heart. It starts to affect the heart immediately. Now we are purifying ourselves to enter Jannah. If a person, if we do not repent, then gradually the whole heart becomes tarnished with darkness. And as a consequence, one fails to determine it between truth and falsehood, goodness and evil, which ultimately results in one heart becoming blind and heedless. My brothers and sisters, in order to remove the stain which one little sin would cause, from the heart, one must apply the methodology of purifying the seven sensual organs by individually cleansing the limb, one organ at a time. We must firstly begin purifying our tongue by abstaining from sin of this organ. We must make certain that whatever we do, at any time, 
if you're by yourself in a crowd, whatever you're doing, and the vague idea of a sin has entered your, your thought, into your thought, it enters force, then it goes to the heart. Immediately, immediately, you must stop and remove it from your thought. Because if you don't do this, if we do not do this, my brothers and sisters, this little dot will grow larger and larger and larger. And it affects the heart, then it affects every other organ within the body. And my brothers and sisters, that will be a disaster for you and I. The Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said, a person who indulge in bad deeds, then after that does good ones, his likeness is of a person who is wearing an armor, a metal clothing, which is strangling his throat. He then does a good deed, and one nut or one button of the armor opens. He does a second good deed, which opens up a second link as a result of him being to beginning to walk free. My brothers and sisters, we take a lot of things for granted with these seven organs. With our tongues, we do such things and make false promises. We do excessive talking. We become hypocrite with our tongues. We begin to dispute among each other. We begin swearing with our tongues. We continue to backbite with our tongues. We do obscene language and bad talk with our tongues. We disclose secrets which we're supposed to keep for our brother with our tongues. We have useless talking. We ridicule each other. We have to desist even to curse each other. We have to desist from this. Because this small, these small actions grow within us. It grows within us and get larger and larger, darken the heart, weaken the heart, which cannot take any more pressure. And it leads us astray. With our feet, we go wrong places, unnecessary. With our stomach, we eat excessively. We consume alcohol. We take drugs for no reason. We have to stop this. With our private parts, we keep it unclean. We commit adultery. We play around with it. And we keep it uncovered. With our hands, my brothers and sisters, we commit frauds. We hit each other. We punch and slap at each other. With our eyes, we look at unlawful things, unlawful video. We find our time looking at unlawful movies, unlawful things. Some of us don't have the time, as we know it, to lower our gaze when we're in a certain position. With our ears, we listen to bad music. We listen to things that people say, vain talking. And if someone is ridiculing someone, we continue to listen. We don't rebuke them so that they can change themselves. My brothers and sisters, as I said, our journey, we have to remove all the bad enmity, the bad things from within us so that we can complete a beautiful film to enter Jannah. We must carry out a seeker, a person, carry out a sin with one of those organs, as I said. When a sinful thought enters his mind, then his heart, he makes the intention to carry it out. He makes his intention to carry out the sin after it enters his heart. At the beginning, the sin is presented in the form of a small sparkle. And the thought at this point is easy to save him. As I said, if it comes very small in the mind, in the thought, before it enters the heart, we can remove it. But most of us, most of us, we allow it to grow because we contemplate on this act. However, if this sparkle, as I said, turn into a flame, it takes over the whole heart. 
and mind which subsequently lead the person to using his organs to carry out one of the sins that I have explained to you. In order to tackle the sparkle or the devilish thought from entering and settling or expanding in one's mind, the seeker is practically trained in the second stage of purifying our mind from the shaitanic act or the evil act and taught how to preoccupy ourselves with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the event that an evil thought does enter and settle in one's mind, we should or we are taught how to practically extinguish, extract, and prevent this act from occurring in the future. We must then, there are 10 levels in which we can be practically trained how to purify our mind from evil thoughts for a consecutive period of 30 days at a time. This is one writer that explained this. In this level, the seeker is trained to conquer the devilish thought on the concept of settling, settling thoughts and also how to extinguish them. In the subsequent level, a seeker is taught how to remain occupied in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must, at every time, at every stage that we meet, as long as, as a thought has come to you to commit an act, immediately, as I said, you must have the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on your tongue. Repeating these words, if an evil has come to your thought, a'uzu billahi min shaitan al-rajim, bismillahir rahmanir rahim, you seek the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You make a short zikir. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance and protection so that you would not commit this act and you move away. As we are taught, if you're sitting and you end in an argument or you with an argument or talk with somebody, stand up, move away. Allow that person to think that they won the battle. Move away, brother. If you thought of committing an act, and you know it's wrong, walk away from it. Make certain that whatever we do, our flame at the end of the day must be a good production when we return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, in the first level of building our thoughts, of changing our life. We are taught not to intentionally or to think of things that are wrong. However, if shaitan or the devil, our nafs, our evil nafs, allows these, act, these thoughts to enter us, our mind, then one should disregard it and not intentionally extend it. On the contrary, one should seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and redirect the thoughts towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the exalted, or the messenger. The messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sallallahu wa sallam said, the hereafter or any other possible worldly action should come to our thoughts. Let us think about if we do something that is wrong, What's the consequences of it? And let's move away from this act. One should never engage or fight with a thought that comes to you, or this will cause the thought to become stronger and reoccur. Instead, when a person is incited with an evil action, he should immediately recite, O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from the accursed devil. Or, I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. I'm beginning to think about any permissible worldly matters. After that, we should recognize that the thoughts only came with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
and it is within Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowledge that we should think of Allah in fully capable, who is fully capable of punishing us if we commit any wrongful act. My brothers and sisters, there are always two routes to anything. One which leads towards the disobedient and sin, and the other leads towards striving for the closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the shaitan whisper enter into our minds, it is like a showering larva of fire which strikes at the plane. If one entertain the thoughts of the whispering, the larva, whispering larva of fire begins to burn within, within you. If it is left, then the larva of fire will inflame the entire mind. If the mind begins to burn, one will commit an evil act. Every soul, every second is critical as every second endangers the body until it burns the mind. So, actually, whenever the thought comes to your mind, if you do not stop, if you do not stop about it and think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, think about the consequences of it, it grows in the thoughts. It grows in the minds. You develop, you develop a hatred for brother. For no reason at all. You just, I just don't like this brother. For what reason? And you keep holding on to this thought in your mind. For no reason. For no reason. Not realizing that in your heart, you're creating a dark spot within you. And it takes you nowhere more than endangering you. My brothers and sisters, when one leaves, when you leave our, your houses or your businesses, you should make invocation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you from other evils inside. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you wherever you go and take you back home safely. When you're in a difficult situation, Always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter what it is, what the case may be, nothing happens without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing happens without this permission. So we got to make certain. When you're in a situation, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you. And you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for bringing you through whatever your trouble is. And do not allow the shaitan to make you think otherwise. Because that's his duty. And he will make certain that you go astray. My brothers and sisters, in our hearts and our mind, we must always think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing else. I mean, we have our worldly act, yes. But we must always have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our thoughts and in our mind at all times. Do not allow, do not allow little evil things, evil actions to overcome us. Because if on the day of judgment, as Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, he's fearful for his ummah. And why he's fearful for his ummah? Because some of us on the day of requital, we will go to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala with a broken pocket. We have nothing. We have nothing. We have to make certain that we do good in this life. We have to do good deeds now to our fellow men, to the animals, to everything around us. We have to make certain that we do good. And we can always be counted on Allah Taala to bless us. Make certain that we enact everything, simple things that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu had taught us. Follow his sunnah. Be on the right path. Do not allow anything to cause a mold to grow in our heart. Do not bring hatred to each other. Do not be backbiting. Do not be abusive to each other. Be helpful to each other. A brother need help, help him along the way. A brother need guide him, guide him along the way. S speak quietly to your brother. A brother does something, go to him exactly, straight to him. 
Proto, you're wrong. This is the kind of persons we want to be. This is the way we want to act. This is part of our script that we receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We made promise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked us, who is our Lord at the beginning? And we said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you. But many of us has forgotten it. Many of us has forgotten this. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran. He said, why is it? Why? Which one of my favors, mankind, will you deny? Which one of our favors will you deny? For what reason? I've given you everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And many of us are ungrateful to this day. My brothers and sisters, we have to make certain. We have to make certain that we stay on the right path. The path of success. Following the teachings of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best teacher we have as Muslims. The best teacher we have. Do not allow ourselves to go astray. Let us make certain, my brothers and sisters, that whatever the teachings that we have received as Muslims, we must keep this within us and enact it on our outside where others are looking unto us for guidance.